Hello there and welcome to the support material for video coding seminars 1 and 2 and today we are going to talk about OpenCV Video I.O. So OpenCV stands for Open Source Computer Vision Library and it's an open source library with a lot of computer vision algorithms. So there is the OpenCV2, which is essentially a C++ API, and there was the OpenCV1, which was C-based. OpenCV have different modules, so there is the core functionality, image processing, video analysis, 3D, object detection, and video I.O. And today we are interested in video I.O. So, the OpenCV Video I.O. module is a set of classes and functions to read and write video or image sequences. We are not going to use C++, but we are going to use something called the OpenCV Python, which is a library of Python bindings designed to solve computer vision problems. Python is much slower when compared to languages like C and C++, but it can be easily extended with C++ that allows us to write computationally intensive code in C++ and create as Python wrappers that can be used as Python modules. So this is very common. You find a lot of libraries that are actually just Python bindings and the core programming language behind it. It's C++ or C. OpenCV Python makes use of NumPy, that is optimized library for numerical operations similar to MATLAB. And here you find some information about OpenCV Python and some tutorials and documentation. Here you can get started with videos, so you can use video from camera, you can play video from file, there are some instructions, but we are going through one example. Have in mind that you can run in a lot of problems when you are using, for example, OpenCV inside Jupyter Notebooks in some systems. So Google Colab has some limitations on how it displays video inside its Jupyter Notebook in the Google Colab environment in the cloud. So, luckily, there is some hacks. They are not very efficient, but we are going to use during this tutorial. I'm here in Google Colab, and as you can see, there are some videos being played inside Google Colab. First, we will download a video example. So I'm using this wget from our GitHub and we're downloading this video rack and we can see that we have a video rack here. We are going to use this file in our examples and first we will try to display this video. So as I mentioned, it's not easy to display things inside Google Colab. Usually there is a display, IPython display and there is this function video and you just call this function video and you put the URL of a video or the file that you want to display and it would nicely display, but it doesn't work in Google Colab. So what we are going to do is that we are going to load this video and we are going to use matplotlib animation to transform this video into a matplotlib animation and then we will use IPython display HTML to display this video. This is not very efficient, especially if you have a video that is um, very big. This will not give you good results, but for learning purposes and for demonstrations, it's fair enough to use it. So here we are importing these libraries, we're importing matplotlib, we're importing image IO, we will import SK image to just do some resizing and we are using IPython display HTML to display some HTML code. Here 
we define a display video function that takes as an argument a video and it returns an animation. Now we are using image IO to read this video rec.mp4 that we downloaded here and it will be this video and this video is what we are going to use in this display video function so this is the argument of this function that we are calling here then we are converting this to HTML video so this is part of the this animation we can get some help about this animation here and here we are going to find to HTML5 video this saves the animation as an H264 video encoded in base64 directly into the HTML video tag and then now we have this HTML video and we can display it using HTML so this inline video display in HTML and we have our video here being played with some controls now we want to edit and write a video with these modifications and this is our next step now we are going to use CV2, OpenCV, and here we are defining a video capture and we are passing as an argument this video file that we downloaded. So we can look at the documentation for video capture and video capture is a class for video capturing from video files, image sequence or cameras. This class provides a C++ API for capturing video for cameras or for reading video files and image sequences. So we have this capture object here. Now we are getting the width and the height. So with this cap, then we get cap property frame width, cap property frame height. So we now we have a float of width and height. Then we are defining a codec for a video writer. And we are going to use the mp4v codec. Our output will be this video, we are calling this video writer. The name of our file is mp, uh, output.mp4. Then we are using this codec that was defined here. And there are some other parameters on the CV video writer. So we can also look for the video writer documentation. So it's a video writer class that provides C++ API for writing video files or image sequences and you can have some example here then we were going to do a while loop here so while the cap is opened we are going to read and this read returns a frame and this other parameter here ret so let's take a look what cap read is doing. So we have this doc string. It grabs the codes and returns the next video frame. We have some documentation here for the cap is opened and it returns true if the video capturing has been initialized already. So we have this video capture object while it is open we are going to read and this read will return true or false and we will return this video frame it returns false if no frames have uh, has been grabbed so we are checking that if not read then print can't receive frames or is the end of stream and it's exiting exiting this while loop then we are taking this frame and then we will just flip this frame so this is a function for flip and we will write in the output that we define here with this video writer here we will write the frame then we will release the video capture object release the output object and then we will destroy our all windows so this is an example of what we are doing here so just as an example let's print the shape of the frame 
let's print what is read and let's stop it here so when I execute this we have that this frame is 480 by 604 by 3 and the red is true and then it will execute this while loop and when this red is not true anymore then it will break and go out and then release and destroy all windows so why we have 480 640 and 3 we can also check here what is the width and what is the height so our width is 640 our height is 480 they are here and then we have three different channels here and OPCV reads video in the BGR format. So BGR used to be very popular when OpenCV was being developed and they decided to load videos in the BGR format. Basically we are having this video capture object, we are getting the width and the height from this video capture object that is loading this video rack mp4 we are defining here the codec and we are creating a video writer object here so we have a codec here and a video writer object here this video writer is using this codec so we can also take a look it takes the file name the codec the uh, frame rate and the size of the video frames and this boolean is color so if it is not zero then the encoder will expect and encode color frames and it's default to true let's see what are the options of the codex we have 4cc is a four character code of codec used to compress the frames so we have this pi m1 which is mpeg1 codec codec we have mg um, MJPEG is a motion JPEG codec and we have here a list of codecs so when we execute this cell here there will be created this output and this output should be the flipped version of our video because we are flipping every frame and then we are writing this frame to the output using this video writer with this defined codex and then we are playing this output the same way how we did it here and we have our flipped version of the video oh, let's get some documentation about this flip so flip flips a 2d array around vertical horizontal or both axes it take an input array as a source it has an output array as the destination and we have here the flip code and this is what is going to do if flip code is zero if code is greater than zero or if flip code is smaller than zero so we can vertical flip the image when flip code is zero horizontal flip with the subsequent horizontal shift and absolute difference calculation is if flip code is greater than zero and simultaneous horizontal and vertical flip of image with the subsequent shift and absolute difference calculation to check for central asymmetry if flip code is equal to it's great is smaller than zero so let's just do this so let's say it's um, minus 10 let's see what happens and we see the difference when it's zero and let's put higher than zero so let's put one and we see that it's horizontally flipped that's the end of our tutorial it was just a quick run into this uh, video I.O. using the video capture object, using the video writer, 
defining a codec, doing some basic edit on the video, investigating the shape of our frame, how do we collect frames and write the frames as a video in the output, and also how to hack Google Colab and display a video inside this Google Colab notebook. And it should also work for a Jupyter notebook. So thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in another opportunity.